Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Dexter Gordon solo on Drifting by Herbie Hancock. This is one of the uh, the great solos by Dexter Gordon. Features a lot of really, really good jazz vocabulary. We're gonna analyze it. We're gonna show how to repurpose it for your own uses and your own solos. And this is also gonna be just a general lesson on how to take a, a transcribed solo that maybe you transcribed or you're reading somebody else's transcription and how to take that information, incorporate it into your own playing. Now, if you wanna download the sheet music, I'm gonna make that available on my website and you can download that up here. I'm also gonna make uh, the MIDI file available and the Sibelius file available if you, if you are interested in that, it, it'll be there as well. So without further ado, let's get right into the analysis. Okay, so here's the solo. We're in the key of E flat major. We've got the three flats there in the key signature. The first chord, you know, it's E flat seven, which is a little bit unusual for a song that's in the key of E flat major. It gives it a bluesier sound. If you think about an E flat blues, you would have E flat seven as that first chord. But of course, the, the seven on that chord is a D flat, which is, which is not in the key of E flat major. But we're gonna look at the first five notes here. I'm gonna play the chord on the piano and sing it. The process here that I recommend for anybody who's doing this who doesn't have a lot of knowledge of jazz chords on the piano, just use the three, uh, the three, what do I call it? The three note voicing method for jazz piano. I did a video on this a while back. I'll, I'll link that up top. Uh, we're just gonna play the root in the left hand and then the third and the seventh in the right hand. So here we go. We're gonna stop right there because there's so much we can learn already. And I'll play it now so you get a real idea of how it sounds. Let's just look at the first five notes. We, we wanna specifically look at, at this note right here because that's what's really cool about this, this line. It's the D natural that really makes this line work so well. As I said, we're on E flat seven chord, so we wanna get to this D flat. That's the, that's the flat seven, right? The, the D natural is, is actually a, a note that doesn't fit on this chord. It doesn't really belong on an E flat seven, but it acts as a chromatic passing tone, just like a bebop scale. It's basically a, a, a mixolydian scale with the natural seven in addition to the flat seven. And what that does is you get all of the chord tones landing on the downbeat. So check this out. If I play a regular major scale going down, a ra a rather a regular mixolydian scale going down, it's gonna sound like this. And if I'm counting that out, it's gonna be like this. One and two and three and four. And now the problem with that is that every time I hit a chord tone, it was on an upbeat. One and there's my chord tone. There's the flat seven. Two and there's the five, also on the upbeat. Three and there's the third, also on an upbeat. Anyway, you get the picture. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna add in this D. I'm gonna add in the major seven as a passing tone to make sure that all of the chord tones land on the downbeats. Check this out. One and two and three and four and one. It's perfect now. All of my chord tones are landing on the downbeats. And that's why this D natural is there. Because what it does is it allows this D flat right here to land on a strong beat, beat three. Okay, so we have this D here as the passing tone. We'll just label it PT for now. Now, how can you take something like this and leverage it in your own playing? Well, Let's actually use the chord progression to drift in to help us out here. So let's see, we're, we're gonna try this little lick here on a bunch of different chords. So on E flat, it would sound like this as written. On A flat, it would sound like this. G would sound like this. C minor, we could even do it on minor chords. B flat minor. You get the idea? We're just transposing the line onto as many of the chords as we can. So maybe we can create some variation here to make it more musical by changing the rhythm. Let's do it on the A flat seven. Here's the original rhythm. A one, two, three, four, one. Two E and a three. Okay, what if we start it right, right on the downbeat, right on beat one? A one, two, three, four. So that's using all eighth notes. So here's another simple variation. One, two, three, four, one. So the first phrase over the E flat was like this. And then going into the, uh, the G7, or rather going into the C minor, we have this. You hear the relationship? 
really great improvisation by Dexter Gordon here because we, what he's doing is composing spontaneously, which is my favorite definition for improvisation. So let's take a slightly closer look here at the line that's right here and then compare it to the one that's over here. They're so similar. I mean, it's not exactly the same thing transposed, but it's pretty close. The shape especially, very, very similar, right? We've got this E flat right here. We're gonna call this one, and then it goes to two for the F, and then back to one for the E flat. And then if you look on the G7 side, the G is one. The A flat's not two, it's, it's more of a flat two. We're actually gonna call it flat nine. That's the most accurate analysis there. And then of course G is one again. So same shape there for the first three notes. Now when we go back on, on this side, we've got the passing tone. We've already talked about that. And then it goes to the flat seven, which is what we have on this side as well. And this is pretty cool. Uh, look at this. We got the C up here. Now the C is actually the third of A flat seven. This is a very common resolution, the flat seven resolving to the three of uh, the next chord. And that's exactly what we have on this side as well, right? E flat is the third of C minor. So you can see all the similarities between those two lines. And it just goes to show you can use a very simple five note phrase like we did here and, and leverage it to really make something uh, musical by repeating certain elements and then just developing the idea as the solo goes along. So, you know, of course, Dexter Gordon's a great improviser. I don't know if he thought of this consciously or if it was just sort of a natural continuation of the idea, but it's certainly good to analyze it this way so that we can all extrapolate some lessons and, and try to use the same techniques in our own playing. So we spent a lot of time in the first five notes, but that practice of taking a line, taking a phrase and transposing it to the other chords where it could work is a really powerful way to internalize a solo and expand your vocabulary. One more thing about transcribing solos. When you, when you do transcribe, I highly recommend practicing singing the solo because nothing is going to get better in your ear, ingrained in your ear than singing it. Playing it on the instrument, whether it's a saxophone or a piano or, or whatever, that's definitely helpful. But if you sing it, you're going to get that, that really direct direct connection to the music and you're going to internalize all of the notes on a much higher level. So good luck. <laughs>